Fabulous. Muted. Yeah, well, today's Jerry's day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, please. I, if you can rig it so you can leave and I don't know, you get the credit for coming and <laughs> really don't, don't stay. I, I'm not going to say anything you don't know. Oh, stop it. But, no, you know uh, the feeling please. when you're speaking to your peers. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the puppy? Jumper? Puppy. Who's got the dogs? Get the dog out. I Get the dogs. Ever. I don't know, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> She's snoozing. Well, in two more minutes, we're starting, Jerry. I'm just, people are signing up right now. I'm happy. I don't care if there's 11 people here. Emily. <laughs> well, there's going to be more than 11 people. There's already I'm... more than 11 people. <laughs> <laughs> 50 people. Can I ask Emily uh, and her girlfriend a question? Yes. Really, I'm uh, sheltering in place with Roberta Smith, my wife. Yes. But um, I want to write a book called Dependent Some, or, or wait, no way, Codependent Some More. <laughs> Where, this is very good, right, Emily? What did you say, the last part? It's a very good thing to be together this much, no? Listen, I said this to Allie the other night. I have never been with one person this much in my whole entire life. <laughs> Make a break, baby. You know, like you, you, you yeah. figure out real quick if you're in for the long haul. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. Uh, it's insane. I mean, up here in Connecticut, Roberta and I work in the same office. Uh -huh. I'm facing her. She's not here right now. And I, I hate to admit this, I love it. So. Oh, Allie, Allie, what do you think? Allie, what do you say? You want out? Or? <laughs> the space is large enough that we can have, you know, uh, cohabitate and um, frolic. Really, Allie so, has his so. silk screen studio downstairs, and we live in the loft above. So that's it, great. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Who said hi? Olga. Hi. Hello. Gracie <laughs> Matchin. She should get a mini <laughs> MacArthur. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Hey, Gracie, you're on a here. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. I need to connect with people. I'm getting a little lonely out here. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, we're going to, should we get started? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, boot everybody except oh, yeah. Jerry. Yeah. Put your goddamn mutes on. Otherwise, if you just fart, the whole thing lights up. Hold on. Sorry, I unmuted. So hold on. Jerry. So I unmuted uh, Jerry and, and Barbara. Everyone else is muted. Okay. Hi. Welcome to Art at a Time Like This, a nonprofit virtual platform encouraging the free expression of ideas and art at, the, at a time of crisis. We invite you to visit our site at www.artatimelikethis.com and explore our curated online exhibition, How Can We Think About Art at a Time Like This? I'm Barbara Pollack, co-founder of the site, and I'm here today with my other co-founder, Anne Bahalan, who is a freaking genius <laughs> as a word that Jerry is not afraid to use. Before we get started, there's one administrative thing I need to explain. During our conversation, everybody will be muted. If you want to ask a question, go to the chat feature at the bottom of your screen and type in a question with your name. After our conversation with Jerry, there'll be time for a few questions. And now I'd like to introduce our guest, Jerry Saltz, the most popular art critic in the world. Not a small achievement. 
I've known Jerry since we wrote together for The Village Voice in the 1990s. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning art critic, and we all look forward to his weekly articles in New York Magazine. Today, we're here to talk about his new book, How to Be an Artist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jerry. Please. And find out if he has advice for all of us during a time like this. Thank you, Jerry, for visiting us today. I'm, I'm thrilled to be asked, and I was chatting with the, the first batch of arrivees, we losers who always get to parties first, um, and I'm a little intimidated to see people I know, uh, names I recognize, so anything I say, please don't hold it against me. I'm just as squirrely as all of you. So it's great to be here, Barbara, with you. I'm amazed that you and Anna using your energy to give away to other people's energy. So it's a pretty wonderful thing. And no one is Thank being you, paid anything anymore. Okay, so we were all overpaid. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. I, I was just going to start it and say a few words. Um, viruses come and viruses go. Art is long. Art has never not been here. Art and creativity were with us in the caves. Creativity is in every bone in our bodies. Creativity is a survival mechanism. Every person that ever lived for the last 45,000 generations of your idiot family and mine had to have adapted in real time to their lives. Darwin never said or he spent the whole last half of his life really trying to clarify that he never said that it was survival of the fittest or strongest. It was a terrible misunderstanding, he said. He said it's survival of those most able to adapt. And all of us, as we all know, are being tasked as the angel of death walks among us with adapting in real time. Now, of course, it turns out that art is made for exactly the circumstance it finds itself in. L look at the conditions. Art thrives under pressure. Art for the last 75,000 years, 99% of that time, has been made in small rooms in intimate settings. Art for 75,000 years was made sitting at a table or, you know, in the corner of a cave and next to you, the kids are running around. There's cooking going on in the background. Nana is walking past, like uh, trying to make you take out the dog who's crapping on the table, and there's absolute chaos. This is exactly where art was made, and everything that we ever made was made once upon a time when the studio, the office, the kitchen, the temple, the pharmacy, it was all one room. And that's where we find ourselves again. There aren't any big artist studios going on right now with 35 assistants and 22 staff people keeping track of empires where it never sets. It is no longer possible ever to use the word normal to talk about uh, collectors, artists, dealers, curators flying from New York to London for the day to go to an art fair or, or, or a museum show or, or a biennial. Art will never disappear. 
since it's always been here, I must conjecture this, until all the problems it was invented to address have been successfully addressed. It's the oldest, I think, greatest operating system our species has ever developed to explore consciousness, to record the worlds that cannot be seen, like hell or how you feel, to record what it does look like and all the other things it records in an abstract way, two-dimensionally of this otherwise three and four-dimensional world in a way that other people can see it. It was a gigantic leap from singing, which you had to be right there, or dancing, or the way you would sort of paint your face or make the jewelry to express yourself. Once you started carving it into riverbanks, and there's a lot of evidence that there was a whole ba relief practice for it those same 75,000 years, but all of that is gone. Once you could record and uh, those thoughts and make them visible to other people, it's never gone away. It's that supple a thing. Now, the important thing about this time is what we're all doing is modeling something. As I said, viruses come and viruses go. There's every chance that after first contact with the Europeans in the new world that 99 percent of the a population was wiped out, right? But viruses come and viruses go. What you are modeling for yourselves right now, what I am modeling for myself right now, for your children right now, is are things that you're going to take with you for the rest of your days. Because the art world that just closed we all knew it was a system no one liked, just like America or many governments, but no one knew how to fix, just like the art fairs. Nobody liked art fairs, but yet we did not know what to do with them. The change that has come, as we all know, has been coming a long, long time. Uh, the stress fractures and the infrastructure were 100% apparent all this time. And now those changes are here. Um, this was an art world that answered every dilemma. And, not, and I'm very lucky to be in it. I am not, I know, I didn't, I don't want it to go, even though I thought it, I think it's gone. David Chang, the famous chef, recently estimated that 90% of all restaurants will never open again. It is possible in our beautiful, bloated, obscene, gorgeous world that that similar percent of art galleries may not be here, except for four museums, MoMA, the Kimball, the Getty and the Met, except for those four museums, every museum has already flipped the switch. You ask your friends that work there into super emergency. They must do self-induced comas or, well, we don't know. All performing art spaces can last usually about one month with their budgets, one month. I don't have to tell you that the art world had no seat at um, Trump's stimulus table. Fast food did, so fast food will emerge on the other side of it. Smaller restaurants had a small table. We had a seat. We've had no seat. The thing about that's happened and the, what you are modeling, and then I will shut up. I told Barbara I'm going to yammer for about 10 minutes <laughs> because I'm alone like you or, you know, shell, whatever. Um, that the art world, you're being tasked right now 
with rebuilding our world going forward. I will not live to see that art world, okay? I will see what this looks like on the other side when we emerge. But once upon a time, I built the city with 10 million other people like you, the older people, people who had nowhere to go, ne'er-do-wills, people with no degree, who never went to school, who was a long distance Jewish, bald, overweight, idiotic truck driver, who did not start writing for the Village Voice, which Barbara mentioned. I didn't start, my, the first word of my whole life wasn't written until I was 40 years old. And I didn't start this part of my life writing weekly, which is what I wanted to do, to a wide audience and never to an insular uh, top-down audience. I did not start that till I was 47. 47. So probably most of you listening now are younger than the age I was when I started. I'm really in the first phase of my career. In any event, to finish this, you will be building a new art world. I believe everybody already has those tools of building an infrastructure of care, of collectivity, of intersectionality, of communality. These are things that are in your bones, everybody younger than me. I'm 69. I just turned 69. Those things were not in my bones. You had to have taught me that. We must never go back to what it was. And my guess is we probably can. So thank you for listening to this diatribe. And one other piece <laughs> of advice about sheltering in place. We're on day 29, about two hours north of Connecticut. As many of you know, Roberta Smith, my wife, is in a lot of very, very high risk categories. So. Our sheltering has a lot of moving parts to it, and doctor's visits over the dam. You're yelling at your computer, your computer's telling you what to do, but where did this come from? Oh yeah, last piece of advice, never tell your refrigerator your first name. It's a rookie mistake, and it starts calling you, oh, Jerry. Hey, hey. Jerry, oh, Jerry. <laughs> I'm hungry. Don't you, to, don't you want to get to your book a little bit? Oh, well, <laughs> buy my goddamn book. I This is my fifth book for the first four. I made a total, they all sold out two editions, big successes. I made a total of zero. <laughs> zero. I can relate to that. You know, it's okay. What I wanted was an object. It's very thin. You could read this book very quickly. It's got great pictures in it. What's that? That's Alice Neal. So I'll talk about anything you all want to talk about, and I apologize before I open my mouth. Well, Jerry, Ann and I have a couple of questions for you. I'm, yeah. But well, Ann, do you want to work, ask the first question? No, no, no. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. I just well, I'm curious audience. about why you would want everybody to be an artist. Oh. First of all, I think I have never met a person that's not creative. I know this again in my bones from what I was telling you about where we're all from, but also about living in the unfortunately too long till I was 40 in the real world as someone that loved art, but had no one to talk to about it. So I would talk to about it with anybody out there. I challenge you, whenever museums open again, we'll have to have our temperatures taken before we go in. You will have to present the proper papers to show that you have been tested and you either have the uh, immunity or blah, blah, uh, and they'll be at half capacity till about 2023 or so. Um, ask the person next to you, what do you think of this painting? You will have your mind blown. I think everybody is creative. 
and we just got so goddamn insular where the only people that were allowed to make art for the last, say, 200 years were white men. And uh, then it turned in that you had to go to one of seven schools, and then you had to worship at the feet of one of six uh, big deal writers, and then Hans Ruck Ulbricht, whatever his name is, he looks just like Anthony Artaud, uh, which is good. Uh, you know, have to pick you. All, all I know is it was too insular. 51% of the handprints in caves are women's. Right. 51% right. of the conversation was excluded and all people of color, forget it. So, yeah. so, then, so, so in your book, you describe yourself as a field, field artist, yeah. but you don't allow any fail, failure instructions in your book. Um, you rather encourage everyone to continue, uh, even if they, in one chapter says, be delusional. I think it's chapter 62. Yeah. Um, so can you, can, yes. what, what, what is a failed artist? Here's what a failed artist is for me. The book is written as a note for me to my younger self, who once did try to become an artist. And I was an artist and I made art every day. I helped start a gallery in Chicago. I curated 75 shows. I made art. I showed art with a brand new dealer named Barbara Gladstone, who was just opened. I sold it. I got a national endowment for the arts grant. I got a good review in art form, but the demons that lived in my mouth that live in your mouth spoke to me. And they would say just what they say to you this morning. You're not that good. You're a fake. You're a, sh you can't, you don't even know how to schmooze. You have a bad neck. You don't have enough money. You didn't go to the right school. Who are you kidding? You're an imposter. And after a while, I gave in to those voices and I stopped. For me, the definition of, some, of an artist is somebody who makes art. And I stopped. And that is one of the most, to this day, painful things I ever did in my life. Talking about it now, I feel it in, in me. It hurts so bad to do that. But I self-exiled and became a long-distance truck driver. All right. Well, we're sorry about that. <laughs> it worked out. It worked out. Well, it worked out for me too, but I'm sorry that uh, uh, you are the example of Loser. what giving up looks like. Yeah. You say. I'm the example of desperation that we all feel. My story is the exact same as every person's story that we fight every morning. This book is not written to help make you become a rich and famous artist. If you could write that book, I would read that and try again. This book is to have people have a life lived in art. I, love, I want all artists to make money, Barbara, the good, the bad, and the very bad. I like a sexy 30-year, 30 uh, 30-month 30 career. You know, you get famous, you show at a mega gallery when you're 22, you get a million bucks, art form writes about you, the auctions can't stop writing about you. I'm interested in 30 month careers, but I'm it, the book is about having a 30 year career. And that's what I'm interested in. And the book you know, is, Jerry, yeah. one of my biggest fears when I write a book is that something's gonna happen in the world the day I'm publishing it and half the things I wrote were irrelevant. Did you have those fears? Or does your book endure through whatever crisis we're going through? Ask any person that makes things and they will say, yes, what I am making has ev always had everything to do with the present. Of course, that did happen to me, as you're alluding to. My, uh, my book 
uh, was published t exactly when the America went into lockdown. My 45 day book tour was canceled. Uh, all of my book events, all my South by Southwest appearances, everything. And yet somehow my little book from Riverhead Publishers debuted on the New York Times bestseller list. And I've lately been really, really lucky to be interviewed by people all over the world, Barbara, who suddenly out of nowhere are finding themselves in the, that first thing I was talking about, alone in small spaces with chaos going on, under pressure and feeling an ancient DNA calling to them. So, you know, maybe the book has some relevance. It has a lot of relevance to me. Yeah, we're finding that with our audience too. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, we're not undertakers here. The art world is always trying to say, painting is dead, the novel is dead, what's in, the author is dead. And what's interesting about declaring things dead is the paint, painting and the author were declared dead as soon as women and artists showed up, artists of color showed up to make art. And the, the theory suddenly went, eh, too late. You can't. You can't uh, make art in your own subjectivity. <laughs> That's over. Oh, you want to get into the long uh, canon of painting? Can't. It's dead now. So we have to stop acting like undertakers. What I would tell everybody listening is the content of now, even if you're just painting flowers or stripes or making triangles, the content of now is being embedded in your work and it will be. All I want you to do is work. If you, the easiest thing in this life to, to do is to not work. I know that because I did wait until 40 years of not working. So get off your ass, get back down on your ass and get to work, you big babies. Work as if you only had five years to live because some of you do. Yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking? Um, I'm thinking it would be interesting to see what other people uh, might want to ask Jerry, okay. right? Do, yeah. If you all just want to go back and take walks, it's okay. I just love seeing all your faces. Jerry, one thing I feel like I have to ask before we go to the people's questions is, this seems like a very American book. Right. Like, we show artists from all over the world, and I write about artists from all over the world, and a lot of your advice seems to apply to an American situation, but wouldn't necessarily apply in some of the other places I travel to. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. I guess I think that this would apply not just in this country. I'm, I'm delusional enough <laughs> to think it would apply in any time. That it's about making your, what you want to make, becoming a freedom machine of being willing to become embarrassed of being willing to become radically vulnerable, of being willing to make art in your own voice and not just be a minor example of somebody else's major idea, that doesn't seem very American to me unless if that's American, I'm a first generation illegal immigrant, okay? I am an anchor baby. My father walked here from Estonia it's a long story. I'm, we have no family left in Russia. They all got murdered. So I guess maybe I'm an aspirational immigrant. How come it seems so American? It, I love America. I think, I think uh, it, it's more implied to that when we read the book, we both felt a certain soothing comfort and, <laughs> and and it was like very calm and i envisioned when some some of your audience reading this being in a comfortable situation to think about these things and perhaps exercising your the exercises that you uh, inc uh, incorporate in each each chapter 
So I think that it is a good point, but we must never forget that art was made in the 1918-19 pandemic. It was made in the concentration camps. It was made in country clubs too, but uh, I don't know. Who's sharing? Uh, What's that? I don't know what that is. Okay. I don't know who, that, who did that? Um, I, I put the, the link of the of the book in in the chat for everyone if they they want to uh, acquire the book. Okay. And I think there's a couple sharing. of questions. Yes. Do you want to do you want to uh, pick one or read read one that you see? Um. I I. Okay. It. Jane Fine asks a question. Have you or Roberta or me or Anne? written about things you haven't seen in real life. Is this an adjustment for you to have to yes. write about things on a screen? I think that's a great question for writers. First of all, I am of a breed that when I first started, there were thousands of us. Barbara can attest to this. And now, especially with weekly criticism for general interest magazines, there's probably 12, 20 left. I was asked by New York Magazine to maybe work on a lot of those uh, listicles and things you could see online. And <clears throat> I asked them to, I love those, and I look at them during the day. But I said, I, I, didn't, want to I didn't want to do that. I am trying to take this time to take my work deeper and try to address some things about art that I've, all, I've always known are there. So I've written a few essays already. I just wrote on uh, Bruegel's The Triumph of Death from 1565 uh, about that painting. I'm writing about a Botticelli right now that I've never set eyes on, right? And some contemporary art I've never seen. So I'm breaking all my rules and I'm writing on whatever I can see. How about you kids? Barbara, are you writing on stuff you haven't seen ever in the flesh? Because there's I no am. flesh. I know when Barbara not. writes about some of the art in our exhibition that we've never seen, you know, we see? our yeah. exhibition, uh, you know, it's curated around works that we see uh, on screens and so Barbara does a lot of our writing uh, every day when we introduce a new artist to the exhibition. So she, yeah. she writes on a consistent basis on it. Well, you know, all of us in a way are making this up out of ourselves. You look at a digital file, it triggers things in you and you just write. So yes, Jane. And Jane Fine, by the way, has written a book uh, that you all should uh, buy. Uh, it's about your worst studio visit from hell. It's like when somebody came over and the whole goddamn thing went to hell. And I know that she and another artist put it together. I can't remember the artist's name, but uh, look up Jane Fine. She lives in Williamsburg. She's one of the settlers and go buy that book. Jane, post the book on the chat board so we can all order it. All right. it's, not, it's not out yet. I'm goosing her ass right now. <laughs> um, Just finish the damn thing, you big babies. I have to finish. I'm trying to write. Never mind. Just finish. Okay, another question is, how do you come across artists? How, um, do you just run into them in your daily life? Do they send you never. unsolicited stuff? Okay. I have no life. It looks like I have a life because you see me online, but I have no life. I, my withdrawal, Roberta and I see 20 or 30 shows a week, a great luxury. And then we go home and talk to the demons in our mouth that tell us we are terrible. And then we both have to meet a deadline in five days, right? Deadlines are sent to you all from heaven via hell. You must make a deadline for yourself and never fail to meet it. I've never missed a deadline. 
I never ask an artist uh, what they think of their work. I'm not interested, frankly. I want to tell you what I think. And if I'm wrong, I will find out I'm wrong. And I want, I want to be as radically vulnerable in my work as every work of art already has been. I think that in every work of art, even bad art, deep in it is embedded courage and love. The love of having to have done it. Francis Bacon loved doing those exploding popes, even though he was filled with rage. So uh, I don't talk to anybody when I'm going to write on anything. I never ask the dealer a question. I just look at the work and record my reactions. Pro positive and negative. Too much criticism is just like a happy goop talk. I hate it. It's all positive. Jerry, would, so, would, you have, would you have written or added a chapter if you knew your book would have been released just before this COVID-19? I, I think I would have. That's a good question, Anna, that I hadn't thought of. I guess this whole babble that I'm doing about art uh, being a survival mechanism, the creativity being one of the most important tools we possess as a species. I would have uh, really worked with that and how your studio practice has been with you for a hundred right. thousand years. Children have them. Look over on your left. Your kid right now is drawing. They have a studio practice. So get your own ass in gear. Stop procrastinating. Thinking about something is not making something. I'm sorry. All right, somebody's asking you about procrastination. Mark Rifkin wants to know if secretly you and Roberta binge watch television. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the good thing about being old. We've never had an assistant. Nobody's ever come to our house for dinner. We just don't know how to cook, as you know. We only both do <laughs> this. That is incredibly boring. That's why we don't go to sit down dinners because I would look at you or whoever I was seated next to at the dinner and go, what have you seen lately? And if you didn't see any shows, I just sit there. So that's why I stopped going, I don't know how to work Netflix. Nobody ever showed me. So, oh, sorry, <laughs> I don't know how. So I used to watch sports. I like a thing called Live PD, uh, a police department. And I used to like to watch CNN for some Trump bashing, but things are so bad, they don't even have time to bash him anymore. That, and I think the TV is bullshit right now. I really do. I think it's great for artists. Artists watch a shitload of TV. How, what? It's fine with me. They binge watch and you should just keep doing it. But get, you, you better be working. This is gonna be over by 2021, 22. You're gonna leave your apartments and that you, I hope that you've made something and that you've tried to deepen your work and find what was there. Addr address what needed addressing. This is the longest time you are ever going to have to do it for the rest of your life. It's like being in art school again, except there's nobody to stay up late with. Do you, uh, this is another question from the audience. Do you feel like what galleries are doing now is appropriate to the situation? I think anybody that does anything is fine. I'm not here to criticize. I've been seeing some mean tweeters out there yelling at other, using their energy to critique how other people are spending their energy. Uh-uh. Look, just because the mega galleries are like trying to show the smaller galleries. And of course we all think, well, of course you're trying to show them. That's like fattening the cattle that you just want to keep the farm alive so you can slaughter the cow later. But even that I'm not here to criticize. I want everybody to get through this. This is tough, man. And my, our, like I said, our sheltering in place comes with 
a lot of problems. And I wouldn't wish any problem on a gallery. I, w I hope Jeff Koons and Damien fucking Hearst get through this thing. They have families. I am not here to go back to that high school with money snark. I, I really, it, I hate, um, what are they, uh, cynics. I, I really have no place in me for cynicism. I'm not a cynic. I'm from the bygone world. I saw John Lennon and Yoko Ono walk down Madison Avenue a month before he was shot. Well, we only have a few more minutes, Jerry. So uh, final question is, how are, do you think you have to think differently about art at a time like this? And what role is art at a time like this? Art's role is today, Barbara, what you know it is, why you started with Anna, the site. Art ha is no more or no less necessary than any other thing in this world. It's not the decorative hedge in front of the citadel of knowledge. It's no more or less important than philosophy or psychology or religion. It's part of the whole ball of wax. What will be different, what already is different, what already was dying in front of our eyes was the infrastructure of art. It had become too big. It had a lot of advantages because women and artists of color, more than, it was quite incredible to watch the market make the first moves on women and artists of color, then followed by institutions and lagging way behind is my beloved art galleries. And our critics, Barbara and Anna, were way out ahead of front of that. But it, it just all that bloat had an ironic uh, thing it was doing. And if David Chang is right, that it returns restaurants to the early 90s before we had diversity in food, beware that when the galleries open, you must never wish that they become as efficient and professional as they were. They must never become that again. And um, you will all build another world. And I'm really grateful that anybody even tuned in, follow me on my idiot Instagram. This is all I have. It's me, Roberta, and this machine that lives in my pocket. And buy my book. I don't get any money for it, but I sure I'm proud of it. it like right. you're proud of the shit. Everybody you buy Jerry's book. It's cheap. It's All right, guys. It's, I'll it's, post a link uh, to Jerry's book one more time in the in the chat, and also uh, art at a time like this uh, exhibition. If right. anybody wants to stay on and talk to me directly now, the only other thing I'm have to do is I have to go back to working. I, I have a, a desk and a deadline. So I, I would do anything other than write. So I'm okay. going to sit here. Let's try unmooting people right now and see what happens. Or should we do hands? Um, maybe a raise a hand button, maybe. Does somebody want to raise their hand? The raise hand button is if you click on participants at the bottom of your screen, and then there's a raise ha hand button uh, there. So you can raise your hand. We have one raised hand. Uh, I just unmuted you, uh, Pita. Uh, Pita, uh, iPhone uh, six four six five eight four. Hello, Pita, are you here? All right, go to the next question. Okay. Um, Hold on. Oh. You can ask mean questions like, why am I an asshole? I don't yeah, know. Uh, <laughs> I don't Deborah? know why I am. I hate it. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Good. So um, my question is about um, what Hi, I- Deborah. Hi, Deborah. I know you. We've met. Yeah. Where We've are met. you? 
I am in Kailua, Hawaii, which is <laughs> suburb of Honolulu. I know that. I hate you. You can't, I, Deborah can't speak. <laughs> You're not asking my question, right? I've known you since you were a kid. Okay, so what do you need to know? Okay, so I am so used to coming to New York all the time, and I, I am grieving. I had to cancel my plane ticket, which was for the summer for May 13th. So all I've known about keeping the momentum of my career going forward is is coming to New York and meeting people. And I'm just kind of wondering now that I'm sheltering in place, my work is sheltering in place in Brooklyn. Um, I'm lucky that my gallery front room is still uh, talking to us on Zoom all the time. And they're also doing some online shows, but I feel like Everything good that's happened in my career has happened for me putting myself there and showing up and doing that work of being there. And I'm just wondering, because I, I know there's people in other places right now, now that we're so insular, and I guess even people in New York, you know, can't leave their house to do the things okay. that they need to do. What's I think Deborah family. Drexler, good artist that I've known since you're a baby artist, and I love that you're still working. I guess, as I did not go to art school, but in some ways, this now becomes a fantasy for me of what that was, which was all of you putting your antenna out, you know, mm -hmm. and tickling each other as often as possible and passing the pheromones, because there is no center right now. The galleries that we knew are in deep, deep shit right now. They're in a lot of trouble, and I, 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 you have to rely on each other. It's exactly like Deborah is implying, that uh, like going to dumb things like that we are all at, where you're sure the party down the street must be better, but this is the party we are at. So we must share our idiot love with each other and make the best of it. And I love that you came, Deborah. I always say, if you build it, they will come. If you keep working and putting your little antenna in the water, you're a good enough artist, things will happen. I'm Thank sorry you. not to be more guideful than that, but no, it's no, bad. I, I appreciate the yeah. community. I'm really grateful for you and Anne and Barbara for making this happen, because I think this idea of staying connected is really yeah. important. And I'm we grateful are... my gallery's doing weekly Zooms with the artists just to check in with us, and that good. feels really That's good. Nice. Good. Okay. And, Thank you, Deborah. Thank say you, hi. Deborah. Uh, I'll trade houses with you anytime. Okay, next. Um, Jake. Oh, Jake. Hello. Hi, Jake. Um, wow, hey, Jake. nervous. Big You're audience. Nervous. I'm more nervous than you. <laughs> well, big fan. Um, big fan. Got this loaded up. Uh, uh, okay. I've been waiting for like six months for it to come out. I bought it like six months ago, and it's just like, with Thanks, everything Jake. going on, I didn't know it was already out. Um, I appreciate it. I love the look of your studio. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> so big question here. Grad school at home recommended reading list for quarantine. I don't oh, know. wow. What a great uh, question, Jake. As Speak I, slowly, I, please. <laughs> no, I'm the worst person to ask, as you know, because I did not go to school. Um, uh, and I started reading only 15 years ago, and my way of reading was to read one gigantic book a year and spend all year reading it. So I started with the Iliad, and then the Odyssey, then the Aeneid, and then etc. I'm the only person that's ever read Paradise Lost three times. So um, I do think now that I've done that, and these are, some of them are hard books. Now that I've done it, I do think that they all have ideas of uh, inherent structure.
that are crucial. If I had to pick one simple art book to read, I think I would pick Calvin Tompkins' Off the Wall. And it's the story of a bunch of idiots like you, named Merce and Jasper and Bob and John Cage, total gay losers, right? Who no one wanted any part of. They, they got around, they discovered an old idiot French artist named Marcel Duchamp that no one remembered. And they built a new art world. And then the first Swish artist ever to appear in the 20th century, Andy Warhol, sort of saunters in and it changed, and art history jumped the track the same way art history may be jumping the track right now, but we don't know. It's an easy read and it'll make you feel less bad. Awesome. And I, I think Barbara and Anna might even ask to do a project that I, I once wrote a book called. Can you see that? Yeah. The cool. ideal syllabus. It's very thin. It was free. That's what, what a bad money person I am. Mm -hmm. um, and it asked 54 very famous artists, Stan Douglas, Peter Doig, Cheryl Donegan, et cetera. Name five essays or books that you might read. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Thank you. you. Know, what would you recommend, Jake, before we say goodbye? I love your studio. Oh, man. Uh, I've got... Don't work in oils. Oh, it takes too long. Anyway, go on. What, I, what would you recommend, my man? Put me on the spot. Um, it is hard. I know. That's a really good. I look at vitamin P2 all the time. I just oh, look good. through that. That's a great book. Um, good. There's a few on Audible. I just got to load that. I think the last thing, well, I was listening to Bernie's book, Our Revolution. That's like, it's you know, years, though. you Bernie people, it turned out you were right. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> I was Elizabeth Warren. You were right. Yeah. The twelve million dollar stuff shark by Don Thompson was like an interesting I'm insight. told that's good, yeah. That that's uh, the longest and then how to see David Solly. I've been listening to that too. So he's a smarty pants. Watch him. He's good. Okay, anybody else? Thanks. Where do you live, Thank Jake? You. I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Great. You're gonna survive, you Hopefully. fucker. <laughs> yeah, because your rent, your rent is lower than Barbara's and, and Anna's. And so yours fine. We're dead. Next question. <laughs> Next question. Um, hold on. We have her. I'm trying to mute you. Oh, I think you're. Yeah, you did. No, now yeah. you just muted her again. Uh, sorry. Fleur, can you unmute yourself? Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm hey, from Flora. New Zealand. Hi, I'm from New Zealand. Ah, hello. Oh, I love New Zealand. I've never oh. been there, and I love you. It's beautiful, and very uh, no, very uh, good in the COVID situation. Good. good. Yeah. I've just read your book. I thought it was great. Um, Thank you, Flora. You and Roberta talking online. Thank um, you. I wondered what you thought of artists mounting their own artists mounting their own online exhibitions just on their own what do you think of that as far as a couple of ideas one of the most powerful memories that i have in the art world uh floor is after the culture wars of the 1980s and the devastation wrecked by aids and a recession of 1990s in 1993, a young dealer named Gavin Brown rented a hotel room in the Chelsea Hotel and put up a show of a young unknown artist named Elizabeth Payton. And you had to go to the front uh, desk and get the key to room A28. And the 30 
people saw the show. This is like the Sex Pistols, when they say 25 people saw the first show, 24 of them started a band. <laughs> this is how art worlds begin. Very small acts of courage, love, desperation, and done on the cheap. I asked Gavin Brown, how many, he knew how many people saw the show because you had to sign in and it cost 400 bucks and nobody stole anything. I think you should, if you build it, Fleur, they might come. You know how I post all my idiot things on Instagram? Yeah. I, when I'm blocked writing, which is cut regularly, I follow hashtags. And it might go from Pablo Picasso to, to Jake McCauley, to Abner D, to Evan Pepper, to Fleur Wicks, where I go, she's not that shitty. Maybe I could post this piece of shit. And people would understand that it's not pure crap. And <laughs> you just don't know who's looking. I bet you there's a few people here I've liked to comment of yours. Have I ever liked to comment or work? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, well, let's get, let's remedy that now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you just do everything. It's over for you. It's going to be over way before it's going to be over for me. Okay. Mm. New York is in trouble. It's going to stay in trouble uh, because of our country and um, New Zealand. Hey, did you see my presidential sticker? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, just take over other countries. Other countries are going to take over, or China will. So why don't you just do it first? Europe, yeah. South America, please, for God's sake. Have Thank a great you. time, Fleur. Thanks for Thank asking. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody Thank else, or do you, you have to go to the bathroom and stuff? Or? Steve? Steve? Does somebody, Steve want to say something? We'll go however you want to do it, Jerry. Are you enjoying this? Yes. This is the book event I never had. You know, um, I had one event in Toronto for three hours. People waited to sign my book. Uh, I signed the book and it was the best three hours of my life and it never happened again. I'm not complaining. I'm really lucky, but Jesus. <laughs> Who's so, next? Yeah. Steve is next. I unmuted Steve. Okay, great. Um, this is fantastic. Thank you so much and, and thank you for everyone. Um, so galleries, you know, I read your piece that you wrote uh, online, is uh, spot on, I think it's fantastic. And, you know, I wonder what the role of galleries will be, because right now they're just a giant empty box that will probably shift. And also right now they're just like an online brand that's kind of like, you know, no disrespect to, to, to the great curators that are on the call or, or gallerists. But, you know, they can't just be uh, an online curator, which is kind of what they are, or they're, you know, moving their, their curated artists that they have online. Okay. So what is the future for what I think I am from the bygone world that still believes that the, that the greatest vehicle for delivering new art that I ever saw in my lifetime, they were art galleries. Now, of course they became too efficient and that the taste got narrower and narrower and narrower. And then why blogs followed this, I will never know because since critics can never make any money from what they do, Anna and Barbara know this, that we are, have freedom to write anything we want. And yet all the blogs are still tracking these 55 mostly male, white, rich artists. Now, I love a lot of those artists. I love Christopher Wall, but I really don't give a shit how much the painting sold for in London last month. I, I think it's great 
for the galleries and for the collectors and for the artists. He's great. What I want from galleries is the same thing I've always wanted. Willie Sutton, a famous bank robber, was once asked, why do you rob banks, Willie? And Willie said, because that's where the money is. I just want to go where free art is, free art for visibility. Uh, Steve, so I would say once this is over, in every city, you're going to see new, smaller galleries making it up out of themselves where real estate allows with the prices are going to be much, much, much lower. Art got too expensive. Everything got too expensive. I know you're all thinking, not my art. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about your art. I'm talking general. That Steve, the best thing that could ever happen other than this tragedy is beginning to happen in the art world, that it's forcing a change just the same way this tragic coronavirus is forcing change on us. And where are you located, Steve, before I say goodbye to you? Second Avenue and 11th Street. Amazing, because I was going to yell at you for being in Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, God Anna. bless us in New York. We're in trouble. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Next? Um, uh, uh, Azad? Well, hi. Hi, Jerry, again. So, uh, we spoke hi. in... Hi. Hi again. Where so, are you located, Azad? London. And you are uh, jealous, I know. I'm so jealous. Yeah, okay. I know, I know. Go I'm jealous of everybody. Okay. Of course you are. So, you are 69. <laughs> And where would you see yourself as an artist right now? Because you regret that you are not one. No. I would see myself as a little bit deluded, 69-year-old who made okay work that did not escape its origin moment and the styles, the ideas, the tools, the deep content of my own period. I, I think that is why I am so happy that something deep inside of me was telling me that as painful as it was to give up, that there might be some place that I could, ex you know, uh, uh, fly on extended wings and maybe do something in my own voice, in my own idiom, and use materials in my own bad, but original way. I think I didn't have it with art. I, I was okay. I was pretty good. But now that I know how complex, mysterious, beautiful, and vexing art is, I was not the man for you at all okay don't you think that you are an artist but your medium is writing sure okay i i don't mind accepting that i, I to, to me again i'm old azat so the word comes with a beautiful terrible respect and i i like i don't even identify as a writer as azat i identify as a folk critic i could never write a book called How to Be a Writer. It, it, it would be a complete mystery. It would have one word, get me the fuck out of here, you know? But, uh, you know, but uh, how, how's your work going? Not bad. Everything is fine so far. In my, you know, I'm working from home, but yeah. everything is fine. Are you sheltering alone? No, uh, thankfully no. I've had an idea that I wanted to raffle myself, because I'm insane, to, to speak to people that are sheltering alone. That seems to be something that I don't want to let go. It's just been in the back of my mind. And in America, this may go on a long time, especially where I live. So maybe Barbara and Anna and I can 
start doing that. I don't know. Maybe. We can hang out in Zoom anytime, Jerry. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> Thank you, Azad. Um, Thanks. Anyone else? Jerry, we have three more people. Um, it's 5.05. .05. Okay. Do you want to take the, the last three questions? I'll do it quickly. We'll do a lightning round. Okay, a lightning round. Um, um, up near. Bernie was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, Abner. Abner. Hey, Abner. Hey, yeah, yeah. I won the lottery. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was like amazing. I thought where, like, uh, where are you, Abner? I love your style. Mwah. No, just now, just now. I feel like I'm talking to a writer of how to be an artist. So I feel like okay, let's. Okay. Go. Okay. Um, I'm in Indianapolis right now, but um, I'm a Filipino. I am from the Philippines actually, and it's just my first. I think month here in the US. I'm under ACC grant. Cecily forwarded me this um, talk and- I'm an I, ACC alumni also. Oh, hi, hi. Oh. Okay, hi fellows. So yeah, so very interesting times. I'm just starting my cohort. And okay, what's your question? My question is, um, we're talking of, uh, I wanted, I wanna, I want to know your thoughts about uh, art and activism during this time. Activism is, is sort of like, a, it requires a certain presence. Um, and I, I'm interested to know your thoughts on how artists right now can manage these voices strategically because it's the, we have um, sort of like overloaded online platforms right now. And how can we, how do we position ourselves um, uh, in a way that we can make sure that the important voices are heard um, in a way in the messages because in my country it's different uh, the struggle is real and the artists are moving um so fast and helping other people and that's one thing you know to make the government like so i'm interested in how you see that jerry that is a really big question as you see the difference between your government it is in the Philippines and this government, which is we're all in this together alone, which really translates to you're on your own. You can see it in the supermarkets and people shopping like crazy and food lines. We can't even take feed our people. I trust uh, Abner that you already and you must be in touch with other vampires like yourself. All artists are vampires and you need each other. Do you have a group of fellow vampires that you converse with every day online? Yeah, definitely. I have a collective myself. I lead a collective. It's a multi-arts platform as well. But um, I'm also understanding that I'm under grant right now. So I'm very reflective in a way as much as possible. <laughs> but yeah, I do. All right, thank you so much. We're, we're gonna continue uh, with, with Jessica. I love you, Abner. Stay in touch. Yep. Yes, thank you, Abner. Thank you, Anne and Barbara and Jerry. Thank you. Hi. Um, I don't know if you can see me. I certainly can't. Am I? Are you hearing me? Yes. We're hearing you. Oh, okay. So I very much like your attitude and your hope. I mean, uh, for me, it would be a hope that this uh, crushing gallery system will go down because um, as a matter of fact I've been a member for I don't know at least 20 years of an artist collective right originally in, in uh, Soho and then in Chelsea but impossible to get um, critics to come and what was I, it called it, Jessica uh, well it became it was NoHo Gallery and it was M55, and now we're NoHo M55 Arts. Okay, go on. What is your question? Try, okay. try to couch it as a question. Surely. Um, when this is done, and we still have art critics, they'll still be working for magazines and news. There won't be magazines. There's no more magazines. Yeah. Well, but but see, go on. Go on. on. It, what, that, but they'll be hired by people who are companies that are earning money. Go on, but go on. That won't, that won't send you to artist collectives, will it? Listen to me, Jessica, 
it, it, you're breaking my heart a little bit. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. That you wished the whole gallery world to go away. That's one. Two. No, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Okay. I, I accept I, that. I, it's hard. It's hard to do what we're doing on Zoom. Right. Okay. Yeah. You broke my heart. I'm still sad about that. But I go to more galleries. I went to NoHo uh, um, shows. I just didn't see anything there I wanted to review. That's okay. my bad taste. No, that's okay? fine. No, that's fine. I'm glad so, to know. I don't know it, what it will take, but I do know... I don't know. I don't know how people would see your work. Right. I just want, I would like to correct. I mean, I, okay. I was trying to just repeat something you said and it okay. came out. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank we have you. time for one more question. We have deep, one more question from Daria. And deep apologies uh, to Jessica for misunderstanding that. I apologize. I can see how you were just of uh, couching a question with something that I had said. Thank you. Hi, Daria. Last... Hi, Daria. Hi, Daria. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm working hard, are you? Good, yes, I am. What do you think New York is gonna be like in the next year or two? Well, I love, all... where do you live? I live normally in New York, but I'm in London at the moment. But okay. I'm go. I'm gonna come back soon, and I'm excited to go back. But I'm just, I I'm actually excited to go back and try to live in a new New York, and I want to know your opinion. What is gonna be like? Okay. It's gonna be tough, but New York has always been tough. You know that already. That that's easy to know. There are going to be many, many, many empty uniforms for anyone that wants to come here. Anybody that wants to play. If you build it, they will look at you. It's everything that we used to know going away. The old critics, I will be fighting for my job, okay? I'm fighting for my very job right now. If you look at the news, the company I work for, you'll understand what I mean. And every company, when you come back in 2022, or you can come back sooner, you can come back tomorrow. But when people start going back out and new spaces start opening, if anybody builds it, everybody will come. So please come. We've got about a thousand uniforms waiting because a lot of people will be gone Please yeah I was come. Just, yeah i was just thinking about the movement the abstract impressionist movement after the second war yes but might might berlin because it's being run better might all of you people in london and in europe benefit from going to berlin where it's big it's relatively cheap. And Andrea, any place a woman runs seems to run better. Everybody has noticed that. that. Maybe the art world will shift completely away from the United States. I don't know. But you really? think so? It could. You really you, think so? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm horrified by the idea. I, I feel like I I I, I want to know because I I don't think it's uh, but <laughs> keep your eye on the other European countries. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I know galleries are open already in Vienna, and Andrea Merkel is talking about. Uh, types of openings and London as crazy as you are right now my guess is it's going to be run better than we are right now this is the end of an empire and end of empires make great great things like the end of the Roman Empire but it's pretty there's the Justinian plague the Antonine plague there are a lot of plagues I oh, love you all, all right.
I love you, Jerry. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you, you so for much, asking. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on this call. And thank you for, for your questions. And Jerry, thank you for having taking the time to, to speak with us. And remember, so, buy Jerry's book. Oh, yeah. Buy Jerry's book. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, follow me on, uh, goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Great. Thank you all. All right, Anna. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm ending the meeting. I'm ending the meeting. Bye, guys. Thank you.